hello there welcome back uh, in this video we will see how to create a neon glowing or a neon blinking effect in wpf uh, uh, so whatever you see on screen this is the same effect that we will try to build in this video and uh, in this video i have uh, that uh, come I have made this video in uh, two sections the first part we will see how we are going to build the whole neon effect itself and in the second part we will see how you can able to uh, animate it uh, like if you are only interested in uh, creating the uh, glow effect uh, without the blinking animation you can watch until the first part alone first section alone and if you want to know how the animation itself is done it will be covered uh, completely in the second section of the video With both are in the same video of course let's proceed we'll start with the dot net six in wpf application but uh, the concept remains the same for both .NET and also for uh, .NET Framework and also for .NET 6. So, create a new folder and say animations. Say this folder. We'll create a project called uh, Blinking Animation. okay so this is our uh, default uh, application we didn't do anything yet <coughs> let us straight away build it and see how it uh, shows okay there we go so it's a plain application we have not yet uh, done anything now. okay let's close it i will split the screen like this So what I will do now, I will start in the windows itself. If you go to the solution explorer, I have not done anything yet. I will just start something in the windows. And once we go forward, I will move it into a separate control or even a separate uh, library so that uh, you can use this uh, uh, glowing animation in uh, multiple products or multiple projects. So first and foremost thing to create something uh, some neon effect uh, or uh, a blinking effect we need a dark background let me open up my browser and uh, let's go through some of the neon effects available so let's say neon effects when we when we speak about neon effects if you could see one thing uh, in common all the neon effects have a dark background okay maybe this is different this has a uh, uh, this is still dark but it's a different color but most of them have like dark blue or some other kind of color like this so uh, in wpf uh, there, there is a limitation to how we can achieve this background uh, <coughs> or this effect if you are going to do it in uh, ink space or illustrator you can achieve anything you want even you can achieve something like this you can put an image and you can draw something around it uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, uh, WPF uh, th th there are a couple of limitations so uh, we will see them shortly but uh, there is one thing common which is the background we need a dark background the colors okay we have we this I like this color and uh, this pink color we can uh, come back again and uh, finalize the colors but currently we need only the background that needs to be finalized uh, I will put the background uh, in the grid background is equal to let's start with black so it is black then I select it, go to my properties, brush. From here, I will go to blue and then let's select dark blue like this. Okay, something like this. We can we can even go with uh, um, a gradient brush. Like uh, one side, you can have a uh, dark blue and the other side, uh, you can have a little bit something like this. It's up to you to decide how, how you want it. Uh, Anyhow, so first thing, uh, choose a, a dark background and uh, let it be there. And the next step, uh, let's start with the normal text block. Uh, let's say, um, uh, let's keep the name of our uh, channel. It's here. Uh, we could not see, but it's uh, there in the top, uh, black color. Foreground is white and um, 
font size is uh, 55 this horizontal is center vertical is center there you go so now we have got this uh, yeah well, what, what do we need a um, uh, text blocker we can go with the stack panel which is uh, horizontal is center vertical is center and uh, i can put my text block inside it and what happens if i remove this two let's see okay if i if i try to do one more text i have it here perfect so let me remove the second text let's focus only on one text at present now um, let us uh, split it again like this so we can focus on the text okay and move it up okay <coughs> perfect now the thing about uh, 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 glowing effect is uh, in all glowing effects we have one thing in common which is uh, there is some kind of a blur effect that is that that's what uh, gives the glowing effect itself uh, uh, even in uh, real life when we are seeing some uh, bright light we could see that the light is uh, uh, I don't know how the technical term uh, diffused or like some kind of uh, uh, the blur we can see around the light so if we manage to achieve that effect we can give the glow effect there it's straightforward in WPF you can go with uh, text block dot effects and we have something called drop shadow effect and this contains blur radius of 15 or you can give anything you want and color is uh, let's start with red uh, we don't want red we will go with uh, let's see i don't know if i will be able to achieve the same color they had hmm. this okay I will, currently i will stick with this color uh, th this is the, until this point it is fine now but uh, we still have a lot of way to go what i will do now uh, the first and foremost thing is when we are going to give a glow effect it should not be a shadow on a particular uh, angle like currently now it is if you could see on the top side and left side you don't have the shadow or the blur effect only it's like the camera is on top left top of your e button so that uh, the remaining areas are getting the shadow so you always need the shadow depth as zero so that it is evenly distributed you could see that it is evenly distributed around that. at this point i will take a screenshot so that we will compare it with our end product at the later time okay i have a screenshot here uh, you, you might feel like this is the end uh, this looks fine but no we still have a lot of things to do <coughs> first thing um, we need to have one more thing like this so let's take it and um, okay before we take it anyhow we are going to replicate the text block right so we will put them inside a, a resource dictionary so that we don't need to repeat ourselves uh, so resource dictionary for it's a style and i uh, will give the i don't want to give the key so that it gets applied to all the target type if i give you the key unless until i apply the key it will not be apply, uh, adapted by the control so uh, text block set a property let's go down um, we have a text foreground font size let's copy them all like first is text value is mouse events and set a and that's it uh, We'll also do one more thing. Okay, <coughs> here we go. Uh, now that we have got that one uh, set, uh, we will try to do one more copy paste here. Okay, now we don't need stack panel. We don't need it at all. We need a grid. 
you might have noticed this now the color whatever we had the moment we added it one more it got doubled you see now we have a very dark um, light effect when i remove it it was light when i add it now we have like more uh, blur effect so if i keep on adding it the the intensity will increase uh, more and more uh. so we are getting the intensity when we are doubling it up uh. so let me delete this keep it simple now what i will do uh, i will go to this one block anyhow we have set uh, foreground as uh, white right like let us set it to whatever color we have here i will uh, i will i will also try to put this color into a uh, um, um like glow color will i be able to edit it if i select this key not able to edit it that's okay i will just uh, add one more which is solid color brush glow brush color is equal to currently i will uh, manually do them later we can uh, change them as per our the reason why i do it manually is i will be able to okay so we have it here and uh, instead of the foreground i will directly um, bind it right dynamically bind to glow brush okay uh, you, you could see that the color and everything since we are binding the foreground itself to that color we are having this uh, effect so we should only be using the glow effect right so let me remove this one and this one will keep it white itself okay there, there we go so this glow color alone will be going only to here so dynamic resource glow color and same dynamic resource glow color okay at this point uh, i would like to take um, our previous screenshot to see how much uh, difference we could see here like you could see that the, we, we could see that we are uh, improving the glow effect a little bit one by one uh, one step at a time so there we go now the next step is uh, uh, let's try to change this color if you need to change the color let's open up a color picker separately I don't want to do it from here every time so let me open my browser and search for color picker okay because uh, when, when I give it directly in a resource dictionary color I'm not able to see it in the properties so, so I don't want to go every time and check that so instead here I will see what I need okay let's see if we are okay with this color this is just to see if our color changes are not okay this is very bad let's go with uh, okay this color something like this until the development hmm this is uh, this looks okay still this is not fine i will do one thing better i will keep the solid color brush Key is test glow and I will add a color. The reason is uh, when we are doing with text color, we will be able to see it in the properties. Uh. So from here, just try to choose this color. Okay. perfect you know I, I will do one thing better uh, we, we are like you know this glow color every time i need to uh, change this color i select it i'm not able to see that in the properties so 
But solid color brush, I'm able to see, and solid color brush already has another property called color. So why don't we directly bind our solid color brush? Like, uh, let's build it. Okay. Now we don't see anymore. But let's get down here instead of the dynamic resource we will do a binding and uh, we don't need to have element name because this is not an element name this is a resource dictionary so we have a uh, glow glow brush glow brush so let's get down and say like uh, source is coming from a static resource called glow brush and the path is the glow brush has a path called color so whenever this source changes or update changes just let me know you i think we don't even need this one now we'll keep it as is so the color will be straightforward like this perfect ah now there we go now it will be easy for us like when i want to change this i'll directly change the color and i can get the feel hmm. okay we will keep it here now so far this looks fine but there is one major um, uh, thing that is missing if i zoom in closer you could see that there is a sharp edge here there is a white color and the background is uh, having some blue blur effect but this white itself has a, sh a sheer difference between white and the color it should not happen now. even this white edges also diffuse into the background color to give a the effect will be very minor but it will give a very good glow let us make this as 25 and 25 and uh, uh, i will keep it this way no no this should not be 25 let it be like uh, 10 which is the white color one so the base one the base like the bottom is having uh, the blue color with a glow radi blur radius of 25 but the top one i will say like no this should not be the blue but this should be the color of the text block itself which is white in our case so now you could see that uh, white is diffusing little bit into the blue color so the white let it not diffuse more let it diffuse only five so the white diffuses and then uh, you could let, let me put zero and you could see the effect if it is zero you could see the edges are very sharp and then you have a blue effect in the background if, if you make it as 30 you have a blue effect and the edges are very sharp but if you put some uh, white color diffusing like maybe five you can see that there is more glow now uh, let me give a difference now i will change between zero and five zero five zero five so there is a, a light effect uh, but if i if i make this color as a different one i will again lose that because uh, whatever color you choose for the blur should be the same color as your text block so that you could get the diffusing happening so if i choose the same color then i could feel that uh, if i zoom closer this white color itself is diffusing a little bit inside even though you don't uh, see much difference we will do one thing we will put zero and uh, we will redo this uh, base twice so that you can have a twice base effect let me copy this paste again okay let's take a screenshot here one more so this is like uh, the front does not have any diffusing effect let's take a screenshot so this is the initial one then uh, we got uh, one more effect now this is a secondary effect this is the initial we need to oh. let's take like this come on
Let me take a screenshot, a small one. Okay, there we go. And uh, here I will just cut this out and move it back. Okay, so this is the initial. This is where we went. And now I will just add five blur. And uh, now let's take one more screenshot. Now, do you see the difference here? The first one is where we started. Second one is where we had the same effect, but the front was not having this uh, diffusing uh, effect. Now, the third one is, you could see that this looks more like uh, the real light because you are having a diffusing effect. Even though it was very minimal, uh, finally, it will add up to the effect and it will give a glow. <coughs> so, that's, the, uh, that's one of the major... Uh, uh, secret or uh, trick between getting this effect now. so once this is done <coughs> we have one more step to do we should not have both of them at same uh, uh, both the base like we have now two bases and one topmost uh, effect so the bases should not have same blur radius it should be like a gra gradually decreasing so there we go so like 30 20 and then you have maybe 5 even if you give 2 that's okay or maybe 0 should not be there this will remove the effect at all maybe 3 will be fine yeah 3 is okay so 3 20 or maybe we can say it as 15 3 15 and 30 or maybe 35 3 15 20 35 so this makes more sense now we have that uh, final uh, glow effect that we expect uh, let us just stop it here and let's try to play with the colors now. So whatever you do now, you have still have the glow effect. In fact, I think uh, instead of 3, we will make it 5 itself. So you will always have this uh, effect. Okay, so at this point, what I will do, I will just do some uh, uh, experiment at this point. The background, let me turn it off. So we have a white background now. What will happen when we are dealing with uh, white uh, glow? Anyhow, the glow itself will only be visible in the night time, so you will not be able to see the glow in the daytime. So it makes sense your background should be dark, but still, let's try if we can do something. Nope, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is not working. So let's ensure that our glow happens only in the night. There we go. Okay. So now this is all fine. If you are happy with this at, uh, up to this point, you can just. Uh, uh, stop watching the video further but if you want to have the blinking effect if you want to know how we can uh, uh, make it as a control so that um, you can reuse it everywhere continue watching first and foremost step i would like to do this uh, not as a direct user control i would like to usually i will always choose doing it as a custom control but uh, for this uh, let me for this uh, demo, we will do an user control, but I will always prefer uh, doing it as a custom control. If we go down to WPF, you have something called custom WPF control. But uh, this video, we will do it with uh, user control so that it will be very easy to understand. Uh, let's call it as uh, neon text. If you wish to know how we are doing custom control, we have one more video in our channel which is called as toggle button. You can take a look at that video, it was done using uh, custom control. I will paste the link in the description for that as well. Let's go take everything from here, from this grid to this grid, cut them out, put it inside our neon text. Let the solution be here for some time until we finish working. And uh, 
Okay, next thing is resources. The user control dot resources resource dictionary. Go back to main. Let's cut the resource dictionary also. Go back to neon text. Paste the resource dictionary. So we got the effect here. What we needed. Okay. So now we have a neon text. Let us see if our neon text works here. And uh, we should not have the gradient back here. The background should only come from. If we don't have the gradient back, it should only come from here. So let's keep grid because the user can decide to choose any background he wants. So we should not restrict the background to be coming from our neon text. You know? Neon text local. Okay, it says that it is not present. That's okay. Let's put it inside a stack panel. Let's give one, two, three. Let's build it again. Okay, there we go. Let's run this to see how it goes. And I'll also move it a little bit here. Let's hide the color. Okay, so the stack panel itself should go to horizontal center, vertical center. Then we have it here. If I now go to my neon text and uh, change the font size to 70, it is increasing. Let us play with the color. Ah, here we cannot, <laughs> we cannot change the color because uh, we are in the debug mode. During the debug time, uh, the properties you will not be able to change them. Uh, so no problem, we already have our uh, picker open here. Let's go with this uh, blue, copy, paste. There we go. And uh, the glow effect, uh, let us say 45, 25, 10. There we go again. So we managed to get the effects. So this is all fine, uh, everything looks okay, but uh, what about uh, the text? Uh, it cannot be mouse events at all times, we need to change the text. So go back, start with the dependency property. Now this dependency property, you need to do prop dp. You, if you want, you can start the writing them uh, from scratch, but Visual Studio contains uh, snippets so i will type prop dp and then press tab two times i got mine without even uh, pressing escape or anything i could see that uh, some of them are highlighted which means that i can change them if i change the int it gets changed here here and then i change the property uh, it will be changed to multiple places you could see that so now let's say string i press tab so the string got changed here and also in the bottom now the property i will say that as text i press tab you could see that this one got changed to text property text property text property the owner class is my uh, neon text class so neon text now at this point i will press one more tab it will go to the final place here and here the default value is um, i need to give some default text value which i will call it as mouse events now press escape that's it so let's remove it if you want to do yourself this is nothing uh, like it's normal property with getter setter usually you will have a attribute or a field which you will be returning and you will directly be setting but instead of the attribute you have a dependency property which is a static dependency property which you are uh, setting using you like use the dependency property to register this one now but i will always choose um, snippets Anyhow, I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio for this purpose. So I got my text here. I need to go back and bind my text to this value of events. How do I bind? Uh, we are not using, if it is in case of uh, 
um, custom control it will be very very easy for me i will directly use something like template binding and then i will put uh, text so that's one of the reason why i always choose the uh, custom control because we are doing templating there and uh, we can easily bind to the properties but here we are using custom control we cannot directly bind to the property using template you need to find the relative source parent so what happens now binding relative source what is the relative source relative source mode is uh, find the ancestor so what i am telling is for the resources find the ancestor what is my ancestor type ancestor type is whatever is this control what is this controller neon text what i am telling uh, relative source find the ancestor the immediate ancestor whose type is neon text once you find this source the path bind to text so neon relative so neon text has the path uh, has a property called text so once you bind it there that that becomes my value for this text that's what i'm uh, instructing my wpf control to do so now this will become easy for me i'll just say text welcome i'll say hello world. let's not break tradition here hello world welcome to i will not put anything here so it will take the default value of most events let's do hello world uh, welcome to mouse event so we got it uh, so now the text uh, we can change anything during runtime and you will see the difference let's see i will put a small space between the hello world and this and press save uh, i didn't know i have to save welcome to mouse events or i like to say my channel or like our office welcome to our office now uh, let's keep it simple welcome to mouse events okay cool now is there something else that we can um, uh, customize just like how we customize this uh, for, where is this text we can also customize the color and we can also customize the uh, foreground and uh, foreground let it be white the font size we can customize so font size if you if you want to know what is font size uh, it is a double value if you don't know how to under find that out right click go to definition or f12 so text block has a property called font size which is a double so that's what we need we need a double dependency property but now uh, there is one more interesting factor our uh, user control neon text itself is deriving from user control so user control itself has a couple of properties like maybe it does not have the text to property but it has all the other properties it has foreground it has uh, uh, it has font size it has everything all the properties what we need is already present uh, you, you want to test it go back here this dot text so this text is coming from our property if i press f12 it is going here but this user control itself has foreground font size font size all the properties if i press f12 it will go into the controls uh, you see that this is uh, coming from control itself so we don't need to uh, repeat creating another property so i will make use of the existing property i will just copy this paste it here and say bind to font size so we are now done with font size foreground 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 let us not go for foreground now uh, this foreground let it be white i think we can go for foreground which will be our glow brush let's uh, if you want to reuse the foreground you can do that i will say this one let us bind it to binding to foreground uh, it's not a property it's a it's not a direct property right? so, binding to foreground and uh, we need one more color which is our glow color so we will have something called as glow brush and uh, where can we do this this one is also uh, drop shadow effect right let the drop shadow effect of the initial one be 
same as that so let's go down we'll add one more property prop dp and call solid color brush and call it as what do we call it now uh, glow for ground you could see that i am not using color uh, maybe we can use color that that's okay glow color i put an f at the end i don't know why glow color from neon text the colors dot uh, we want the default color right now let's take our default color value from here and uh, maybe this might fail maybe this might not fail we need to know only when we are doing it also. okay let it be here maybe there is a big possibility that we are giving a string value and color will not uh, work but that's okay if it fails we will come and fix that uh, we have something called what is this one oh wait why did it put only color we are thinking about uh, low color again prop dp maybe the intelligence uh, messed it up glow color neon text that's okay okay so now we have something called glow color copy this go back and uh, instead of binding it here You can go to your color and same like this. Bind it, bind it, glow color, glow color. Now let it be white at present. We will come back and fix it. So, this one I will just uh, comment it out. If we try to run, it should fail uh, probably because uh, we have set a different property. Glow color it will not take, uh, yeah, where it is, does not match the type of glow color. Exactly as predictor. So, glow color expects a color value. So, you need to provide a color instead of a string. So, what we can do, we can go back here and you can set up uh, static, it's a private one, static. Uh, uh, color color I will put an underscore default color is equal to see the color itself you cannot set something like this why if I go into the color f12 it is uh, it expects only uh, from AGB values from a values so we need to give RGB or something uh, but we don't have RGB we have the string value so we have something called color converter so this color converter will give me from string convert from string yeah this one oops so this will give me the option to convert it from string and this is going to be color there is some error what is it Parenthesis can be color converter from cannot be accessed from an instance. Okay, let's see. Oh. Let's do one thing, let's just cut it out. Let's say default color is colors dot red. No, we don't need this. Actually, what it meant was, it said that uh, you cannot use it like a method. So it's a static class. Okay, color converter dot convert from string this color to be my default color. Copy this out and put it here. So default color I have provided now. So the moment I set my default color, everything will be fine.
let's go back here and uh, the default color will already be having some value and uh, let's try to debug and see how it goes we need to do something as well which is going back to a neon text and say even though we have uh, binded to the font size the default font size should have some value which is 35 and let's restart it we're currently having no default size so it will take the 12 which is the uh, size uh, well, that's a default size we need to set it as 35 there we go uh, this is okay but uh, foreground we have a problem we are still going at uh, black color that's okay so we go back here and uh, set uh, foreground is equal to white we cannot set it every place right uh, so from here itself or maybe from the text itself we say for this whole user control font size. Let, let me stop this for a second for the user control level I will say font size mm -hmm. right font size is equal to 45 Let me check from the back end. Foreground. Okay. Let's build it. Foreground is white and font size is 45. I am giving it for the user control in the XAML side on initiation. Build is succeeded. Let's start our animation. Okay. Now at this point, uh, I can go ahead to my control, I can remove this. My system has so much cash it seems so. Okay, so foreground is green. And foreground, I will remove it. Uh, should not go to black. It's going to black. So the moment I remove it, uh, the um, binding is gone. So which means that we cannot have it in this place because the moment I set it from there, it is not falling back to this value. So what we do? We can do one more thing. We can, you know, subscribe uh, to the. Uh, dependency property like this and then we can set the default color but i don't want to make this more complicated so at present uh, let's keep it here itself but in case you want to do you, can, you need to look into override style key override uh, default style key and uh, from here you need to register uh, maybe I, I think i will do that in another video and here currently we'll just stick to this one we'll keep it in foreground and font size here and uh, from the value when you are changing something and removing it it is falling back to the default value so just like how we have given the default value of default color here whenever something is failing or binding is broken it falls to default value so by default for user control the default color value is white and that's the reason why it's uh, happening like that so that's okay now this is fine so far uh, we will uh, do one final test with the glow color and then we will go ahead uh, with the blinking animation now if i say font size is equal to 65 75 so if I remove it, it will fall back to the default value, which is 12. So it's not uh, taking the 
value from here the reason is this is also one binding or value the moment you override the value from your user control then this connection is broken then again if you remove it uh, wpf doesn't know that it has to go back to the user control and get the property from here so what wpf does it usually falls back to this uh, dependency property here itself and tries to get the default value from here by default the value is set at 12 and that's the reason why when you are setting some property you are breaking the existing value and you are taking it from the other place and this is also one of the reason why i always prefer uh, custom control because in custom control you will not have this issue at all it will not fall back there it will only fall back to your uh, style resource and uh, you will always take the values anyhow in this video we are not focusing on uh, custom control we are only focusing on user control so let's keep it like this this one be 55 this one be 45 hello world 65 and 55 let's set the glow color now glow color is uh, pink glow color is red red is too bad orange or maybe yellow will make sense so this one i can give glow color is yellow okay so we have uh, three colors and we also have all the glow effects which is happening let's take one screenshot here and compare it with our uh, previous screenshots to see where we are now you could see that from the initial mouse image the green color one you could see this has a really a glow effect uh, which you can compare yourself now. Now that's fine. Uh, the final say so we are almost there uh, to the final part, which is the uh, glow effect. Uh, sorry, the blinking effect. Uh, this one pay close attention because I will try to make it faster. Uh, first, let us hide them all out. Where is uh, the other? Where are the other buttons? I'm not seeing the other buttons here. Let's rebuild. Okay. For some reason, I'm not seeing my comment out buttons. Don't know why. So I cannot go here like Control K, Control C, Control K, Control U. Okay. Control K and Control C. So we need to have some kind of an animation which is set to the text block. So this will, uh, you know, this you can do it in a very easy way. Uh, but uh, if you are, go uh, sorry, do it in a very um, generic way. But when you are doing it in a generic way, the amount of code will increase. Uh, let us start with something simple. I will create a storyboard resource dictionary. I will create for some reason I am not seeing the intelligence intelligence is not okay so let me close this and start again whenever you you don't see some values or intelligence not okay I will always suggest uh, close your visual studio and start it back okay so you see now we got everything back so let us see now we are getting the storyboard or not yeah now i am getting the storyboard let's call it as glow board come on give me a break storyboard glow board as much as I love Visual Studio, sometimes I completely hate it because I don't know, it throws off some weird effect. I don't know. Let's save it here, the storyboard, fine. And uh, go down to this effect, right? Uh, currently, I'm going to directly do it inside the text block and later we will try to do it from outside. Uh, 
uh, let's get down here and say text block uh, not here after the effect let's get down and say text block dot style and uh, a style which affects the target of type text block okay well, we have this style and what are we going to set we are going to set effects remember uh, the whenever you have a style if you have some values set directly on your element like this your style will be overwritten which means that your style will no longer take effect or controller so the precedence is always given to whatever value you have above outside the style so you want something to be uh, taken from the style you should not keep them on the generic place like outside the style you need to place them inside your style so that the style will take precedence uh, say, same like the blur radius you know the blur radius is again coming from a, a template style which has some value of like 8 or 10 or something when you are overriding here the style will no longer have effect uh, same concept so for this effect i will set a value which is a drop shadow effect uh, and remove it from here very simple now what I am going to do, I am going to play with this effect itself. Wait, I am just thinking, I am just thinking. Uh, <laughs> okay, only when you are going to play with, uh, anyhow, let's, let's see, let's see. Uh, if you want to play with color animation like changing the color from blue to red or uh, green to yellow you you need to keep it here but uh, that's okay i will i will show this now style dot triggers uh, what kind of trigger we have like uh, multi trigger even trigger a normal trigger data trigger i will start with an even trigger and going forward i will explain other triggers uh, so event is loaded event whenever this gets loaded do something which is even trigger dot actions whenever this is loaded do an action the action is kind of like begin storyboard action so what should i do just begin a storyboard where is my storyboard it is a static resource called globo so whenever it is loaded just begin the storyboard called globo we also have something called a, a stop storyboard something yeah remove storyboard and we have like past storyboard so many things are there uh, currently whenever it is loaded you begin the storyboard so currently our storyboard has nothing so what should it begin it will not know anything so i'm going to say begin a storyboard which contains a double animation what is a double animation double animation as the name suggests it will animate a double value if you are uh, if you are you have so many things double animation int animation uh, color animation and uh, string animation so so many animations are there what it will do yeah, all kind of animation has a from value and a to value so you might have guessed now in a double animation the from is a double value to is a double value for a color animation from is a color value to is a color value so we are going to do a double animation on some property let's say like we are going to deal with uh, opacity opacity itself uh, even though we have like 100 percent 80 percent um, in uh, in text block or user control it ranges from 0 to 1 so 1 is 100 percent point 1 is 10 percent something like that double animation change the value from 0 to 1 okay that's fine i'm just saying that change the value but this value is a generic like 0 to 1 where is this value going to apply to this is going to apply to some property right Anyhow, we are beginning the storyboard inside a text block. So, I don't need to tell which element. We have two. We need to specify the element and we need to specify the property of the element. Here, since we are beginning the storyboard inside the text block itself, we are very clear that we are applying it only for the text block, this particular text block. The property itself is opacity it's not the opacity of the test block itself it's the opacity of the effect the effect has opacity so uh, this is an attached property so which means storyboard dot target property we have target name target property target property is 
if you normally give opacity it will directly affect what uh, the text to blocks opacity but i need only to be only the um, opacity of the effect to be uh, affected so effect dot opacity and duration uh, how long do you want it to happen like i say like one second uh, zero is two zero is two two let's start with two seconds it will take two seconds uh, and we have other properties like auto reverse true and um, let's not give auto reverse now i will show what happens first let us start here so you will see like for two seconds it will start from zero and then it will go to one just pay close attention what happened very good nothing was okay that's fine let's go here and see if you are missing something where is my neon text what happened why my neon text came out 0 to 1 you have the duration let's keep the duration at first target properties the effect dot opacity that's fine this is what we need effect has a property called opacity and our timing is correct and uh, we have the storyboard here then we have a key and uh, inside our triggers you uh, have the event trigger unloaded you are entering the action beginning the storyboard and here you don't have anything everything is fine so let's rebuild it maybe our visual shadow cache is again doing its uh, dirty trick come on i'm not able to get the handle come on. okay let's try one last time and see how it goes perfect it doesn't work why we have the text to block and if i go up let's go down and see what we were doing we were only doing the drop shadow effect the text to block itself as a foreground which is going to come from the foreground either it is white or black or whatever it is and you have the text which is there hmm let's remove the topmost layer so that we can have a placeholder let's uh, comment it out so we will have the uh, white color up ah <laughs> you know what uh, i have been telling this from the beginning and i myself this it out i have been telling that when you are putting the text block outside it will overwrite the style and the style will not take which i have been telling all these things but what i missed is when we already have a style here and i try to apply one more style whatever value i have here is completely forgotten or like overwritten so that's the problem uh, how do we solve it let's give it a key uh, t block uh, base so which means that now it is no longer applied by default you need to uh, specify style is equal to static resources and uh, go back here and do the same now here you will not apply this place like if you do that then it is the same case so your style is now based on t block base so which means you are taking whatever uh, style you have prepared before and on top of that you are overriding with whatever value you have here now this should be very perfect do you see that but you, you might have missed it to notice uh, there is a reason why you might have missed it because we don't have the repeat behavior this is happening only once uh, 
repeat behavior behavior is forever for any correct is the spelling is correct forever i'm not sure if the spelling is correct or not or like should we have like only one forever see i'm not sure if this is a correct uh, whatever now there it go it works it comes up and then it disappears comes up and then it disappears this is wrong huh? we need to have a smooth effect so auto reverse is equal to true so let's restart again now it should glow for two seconds and then it should come back glow come back something like this glow come back glow come back let's do this for only one second now there is a reason why uh, it was not uh, bright as before because we don't have this uh, second one available only when we have like two base uh, foundation then we have a very dark effect uh, like okay there we go it's glowing coming down glowing coming down you could feel that it is glowing and coming down but if you don't uh, like this uh, uh, if you want to modify something you can say this is a blur radius blur radius why did we take it from here uh, okay we want this blur radius to be 55 let's save it okay now it makes sense let's see how it is let's maximize them and go back to the text and say the size should be 125 and 115 100 okay it works so in the center alone i don't like the color because the pink and this is fine but this uh, welcome to i don't like the color it doesn't make give me an neon effect color so instead of orange let's choose uh, violet it will not make sense ah this is nice this is even nice than the color that i was trying to choose okay there we go let me try to take a screenshot here okay so this is how we do it so that's it uh, in this video we covered how we can do uh, glowing effect and also blinking animation there are uh, more things that you can do uh, just a hint of uh, what we can how we can take it further currently okay you are doing the uh, triggering the animation only in one place so. If you want to trigger this animation based upon a property, only whenever the property is happening, uh, instead of doing uh, like this, instead of the loading effect, you can set one more property like uh, prop dp bool activate glow and owner is neon text and by default it will be false okay so instead of the loaded property you can go ahead and do it on trigger which is property activate low whenever the value is true whenever the value is true trigger dot actions interactions trigger dot interactions begin the storyboard whenever the trigger is active whenever the trigger is leaving you will do an exit action and you say remove storyboard yeah, it says the remove storyboard does not have this remove storyboard is only remove storyboard okay let's see how it goes i think when you are removed a storyboard you will not be able to add it again but that's okay 
we will see if it is uh, not working we will fix that later there is an error which says activate flow is not recognized why you are in text to block uh, text to block doesn't have activate flow activate flow is only present in neon text uh, so you need to have something like this activate flow there we go again binding cannot be set on the property of trigger binding can only be set on the dependency property of dependency value okay but we are not binding it right let's go back here binding to the property trigger property let's try to build again Binding cannot be set on the property of trigger. Perfect. So we cannot set the binding on the property, which means that uh, for the property you cannot set binding. So then there is one more thing. Instead of trigger, go for data trigger. Data trigger allows you to bind, and uh, does data trigger have action? Data trigger dot interaction. Yeah, it does. So property maybe you are only able to directly set so, see again uh, i repeat uh, so from the beginning i have been saying that uh, instead of user control if you use custom control you have many more flexibility this is one more reason uh, when you are having a property in the code behind uh, or like uh, property you are adding a dependency property to a particular control and when you are dealing with uh, uh, custom control you can directly have a trigger which will do the property binding uh, so you can directly call that to it now that's okay many people uh, always choose uh, okay so there we go uh, the reason why i chose user control for this video is many people may, even many of my friends always choose uh, custom controls uh, sorry uh, direct user controls uh, that's the reason why i wanted to do this like it. so here in the pink i will say activate glow is true and just watch what happens the moment i activate it it is there but if I remove it, it will remove the storyboard and save, remove and save. Hmm. Remove is not okay. It's okay. So if remove is not okay, we go for the usual. Copy this one and what happens when it is false but when you don't have a storyboard at all exit exit storyboard will not work so let's try if this works and here begin storyboard name we need to have a name for this next name bsb begin storyboard name bsb this might throw so many exceptions but uh, let us see how it goes activate glow is true and now we have activated the glow and activate glow is false What happens here? Begin storyboard required to find the target of this action. You know what? Uh, I, I will just stick to this activating alone uh, because uh, I don't want to spend so much time again on uh, finding this uh, exit trigger. Let's keep it at this. But the core idea behind this video is uh, building and uh, seriously. Activate low is true, and if you remove the activate low and save, it was working. Hmm. BSV cannot be found. That's what like when you are trying to remove a property which is not there, it will throw exception. So let us not do this now at present. We'll do that later. But the core idea is very simple. 
uh, you can set this uh, storyboard beginning and ending whenever you want so when your property if you want to do it based upon a specific property like activate low then you will do something like this so if you do or you want to do whenever the uh, control is loaded you can set it up on the even trigger of control loaded so the best thing about this is activate low is true you can set that value only for one neon text and the remaining will not have the it should not be activate glow glow is always there it's, it should be like activate uh, blink so it's a blinking right it's not uh, uh, activate glow maybe the name is wrong but uh, let's see what we can do control h activate blink replace all okay so now if i go back here this is activate blink and even here i have activate blink so whenever you activate the blink then the blinking will happen or else you will just stick with the glow effect along here you have the blink activator and that's the reason why we see the blink okay i think uh, that will be all and uh, we'll see in one more video thank you for watching so long thank you